Norwich is Brighton and TV and this is the match preview for Brighton vs Norwich. And last week versus Everton, what a game for the neutral, what a game for us. We ended up coming back from a losing position to end up winning in the 94th minute. What a game. And Potter made, at first we weren't playing that well in the first half. And uh, Potter ended up changing things at half time, changing it back to the three at the back, what we saw in the first few games of the season. Subbing Trossard on, making a few changes, and that, that changed the whole game. And it ended up making us win, being the reasons why we won. And something which I see which is a great change in character is Everton, in around about 93rd minute or 94, they ended up crossing the ball. Ryan caught the cross, and last season you would have expected him to uh, st hold the ball for about 30 seconds and then doing a long uh, kick, and just giving the ball back to the opposition for the ref to blow his whistle. But not this season. This season he does a quick pass forward, so then it ends up making us go on the counter-attack, and we ended up scoring from it. And that was, I, I think Ryan did a big job in that by quickly passing it, exposing Everton when they were weak in the back. And I think that's great what we did. We should definitely, what Ryan did was incredible and not many keepers I don't think would end up doing that. And Norwich, of course they did beat Manchester City but since then they haven't been playing that well. They, they've been a lot worse at the back and it up front they haven't been scoring as many goals and when you have a defence like that it's definitely... Um, easy to exploit them so I think we definitely should be playing a much more attacking football this game so then we end up exploiting them really big and the last time we played Norwich at the Amex we ended up winning 5-0 hopefully that happens again 5-0 versus Norwich definitely a good scoreline to have and the last time we won three in a row at the Amex, it was versus a big six side, a mid-table side and a relegation candidate. And that was Arsenal, West Ham and Swansea in 2018. This season uh, we have played Spurs winning, beating Spurs, Everton who I think are a mid-table side and relegation candidate Norwich. Can we beat them? Hopefully, hopefully that makes it three wins in a row at home. Hopefully that's the exact same as what it was in 2018. And um, Potter definitely has a massive selection headache for this game. Trossard, Gross, both are so good and creative-wise and both play really good football. Moy, back from suspension. Alzate, who plays really well, really good. And Alzate is so versatile that Potter can change the system so quickly and Alzate will be able to fit any position Potter plays. And then there's Solly March, who can play... Uh, in the wing who can play in wing back he can play in a lot of positions as well so I think this is definitely a big selection headache for uh, Potter but I think the lineup he should choose is starting Ryan we don't have any other good keepers to be honest Button's okay but his um, distribution is not what we want it to be so no chance and just steals not great either so it definitely has to be Ryan and I would change it to a back three because that I think ends up encouraging us to attack and Barn is not a fullback. He was playing as a fullback temporarily for the Spurs game and unless Bernardo comes in I don't think Burn, uh, we should play four at the back and Bernardo is not going to be back until at least after the international break. So make it three at the back. Play Burn who's great um, left sided centre back does good runs up and down the wing so Burn, um, Dunk and Webster. And then a midfield four, uh, I think March should be on the left wing back. Mar I know he didn't play that well versus Villa, but to be honest, we were down to 10 men and every player had to put in a lot more sh uh, effort in. And March, he just came back from injury. So, of course, that's going to be hard for March to do that. And it was unlucky for him. And in the right uh, wing back, I think Montoya, I know Montoya didn't play that good of a game last week. But Scalotto has came back from injury and he definitely had an emotional uh, first game back. You could see him uh, uh, when the game finished, he ended up crying off the pitch with uh, physio, I believe. And that just shows how much this means to him. But he did, he's not really playing as good as what he can get. And I think just resting him because he can make a few mistakes. And I think Norwich will exploit it if he does play. So I think Montoya for now and then in a few weeks, Scalotto. 
And then in the midfield, I think it should be St Stevens. I don't think right now can be replaced. He's so good with the ball. He knows how to pass it. He passes his good long range, good short range. He knows how what to do. And Proper, who I don't think should play this match. Proper is a decent player, but he hasn't been playing well recently. And I think Steven should be partnered with Steven Alzate. Alzate, who did get a call up to the Colombian national team for the international break in a couple of weeks. And I think it's well deserved. He can, He's so versatile. And when it's in tight situations, Steve Alzate knows what to do. He can get out of it and do a calm pass. And that's what he does. So I think Alzate with Stevens. And I think it should be a front three consisting of Connolly, Malpai and Trossard. Uh, Trossard, he, not, uh, he made um, the Everton defenders look so poor. He so good with the ball. And I, now I understand why um, he was left out. Uh, he didn't get subbed on versus uh, Villa. Because Villa is a good team. But when, it, when we're down to 10 men, it's so much harder for him. And him getting that extra rest ends up making it. So when he does come back, he, he should be a bit sharper. And that's what it was. He didn't look uh, like he was injured. So I think he should play because Norwich, as I said, are not good at the back. So I think Trossard can definitely exploit that. And Connolly, he did, he played amazing versus Everton, in my opinion. He he made a lot of runs, and unfortunately, the players never passed to him. But when he did do it, like when Webster did uh, that through pass for Connolly, and he ended up getting a penalty from that, a uh, VAR ended up giving it. I don't know whether it was a penalty. It's a soft penalty, and some people don't know. But if you want. It was a penalty in the end. That's what VAR said. So it's a penalty. And then the other one was when he won that free kick. Um, and he and where Rose scored. So that's why I think he does. He looks like he's learning from Murray, getting a lot of um fouls, free kicks for our side, which is definitely good. And Karen Malpai score three home games in a row. Hopefully he can. I think he can. Versus this weak Norwich defence, I think he should play. And I was thinking, should Gross play? I don't know. And the reason why I think Gross shouldn't play is because even though he pl plays really well this season, um, the no uh, sorry, not the Norwich game, the Everton game was the first time he didn't create a chance in the whole match. And he did, he played okay, but he didn't play what we're used to. And I think we definitely can exploit Norwich if we go on the attack, keep on attacking them where their defence is weak and play to their weakness. My score of predictions for this match, I think it will be 4-1 to Brighton. I think it will be a very high score line. And I think it will be um, Trossard, Connolly, Malpai and Lewis Dunk to score. I think we'll score from a set piece. Hopefully Dunk scores. He hasn't scored in ages, so hopefully he get his goal. And for Norwich, of course, their danger man is Timu Puki. And we have to be con uh, concerned over him because he is definitely really dangerous. He's so good when he gets the chances. But they haven't been uh, creating as much as what they were in the first few weeks of the season. So I think he'll score one, but I don't think they'll create too many chances versus our side. Don't forget to like and subscribe to Brighton TV and follow us on Instagram.